And so before we begin, I just want to set the context with these three questions. Uh, firstly, how can consumer purchase trends help the company increase its brand equity? Will integrated marketing channels allow for greater synergy within a company? And will local success lead to global domination? So these three questions are pressing right now for most companies which are integrating their marketing channels and uh, all traditional as well as online marketing channels. So let's move on to the case study. So today we're going to be covering this company called Tesco, which is a UK-based retail giant. Um, and the marketing case study is from the Philip Kotler Book of Marketing Management, Chapter 21. So let's get an overview of the company first. The company was founded in 1919 in London by this person who is on the top right-hand corner called Jack Cohen. Its current market capitalization is about 18.1 billion pounds. It has product segments like grocery, clothing, furniture, telecom, banking and more. And the current employee count is more than 600,000 people worldwide. So uh, let's look at Tesco's growth story. Tesco started off as by the founder Jack Cohen as a single grocery store in uh, London. And the brand came up in 1924, soon expanded over the years and was listed in 1947. It launched the largest uh, superstore in Europe in 1961. Um, it enters the broadband market in 2004. It announces plans to open stores in the US in 2006. But then it starts going downwards since 2013, it reports its first drop in profit in over 20 years. Tesco admits uh, to overstating its profit forecast by close to 50 million pounds. And Warren Buffett calls Tesco a huge mistake. Okay, so let's move on to their vision. Now, Tesco's vision is pretty generic where they say that they high value their customers the most and they're loyal and committed and even also want, they want to increase their shareholders' value. So it's a pretty generic um, uh, vision over here. What, what, so Tesco has recently been in the news most famously for this Booker wholesale deal where they acquired this company for close to 3.7 billion pounds. And uh, this was mainly done to detox its supply chain and uh, uh, integrate it well enough so that it now controls the whole vertical marketing channel. Tesco has been through a lot of in organic growth, both within the UK and abroad as well. It has purchased, acquired companies like Associated British Foods in 1997, the Harrow Store outlet in 1959, William Lowe in 1994, and it has joint ventures like Fresh and Easy in 2007, Tesco Kippa, which is Tesco Lotus in Thailand, and just recently this book was sale acquisition in 2017. So Tesco has been, uh, uh, has a lot of brands, some brands under it. So there's Tesco Express, Tesco Metro, there's Tesco Entertainment, it has recently branched out into Tesco Mobile and Tesco Broadband. Uh, there is uh, Tesco Cafe, and Tesco has recently acquired a restaurant chain as well, which it now operates within its own stores. Just moving on. So there has been some criticism for the company over the years, like defamation um, case laws, uh, case, cases, pricing, price fixing scams, tax avoidance. And the most interesting one was the sale of horse meat uh, in its value burgers, which, was, which, which came out in the UK. And that was a big shocker for the company. And also it was involved in a slavery case in Thailand. If you look at the SWOT analysis for Tesco, we see that uh, uh, it has a really, really powerful retail brand and it has strategic joint ventures in every product segment as well as every region it's present in. But it has certain opportunities which it hasn't reached out to yet, like untapped markets like Australia. It, it can diversify its service further. And uh, with, with online, I, I mean, I believe that Tesco has not fully explored the flexibility it can offer to its customers through online. So how, how has Tesco's marketing strategy evolved over the years? So Tesco has a core market marketing strategy where it uh, focuses on emotional connect with consumers. And that is how it has been uh, reaching out to all the consumers uh, by individually giving them customized coupons and customized emails. Uh, other basic uh, uh, strategies are superior quality, competitive pricing. They offer the lowest, or try to offer the lowest price and we come to that later. And then there are sales promotions. So these are some of the advertisements which that Tesco has been uh, showing around. Uh, the Tesco brand guarantee is something which helps them build consumer confidence. Well, it says that if, if the consumer finds any product which is more expensive than what it's sold for in other competing retailers, then Tesco will give you that amount as cashback uh, at the checkout counter. And also, it, it really cares about its consumers and consumer convenience in the UK. So it came up with this Tesco one in front, where if, you, if there is more than one person in queue uh, at the checkout counter, then the next counter will be opened. So this is just an ad campaign of one of its new initiatives called this thing, uh, an advertisement they had for Father's Day, uh, which shows how much emotionally attached they are to all their consumers, is that they allow consumers to give private messages on their Father's Day to their fathers shopping along with them. And it's just another interesting advertisement. So now we basically understood how uh, Tesco uh, advertises and markets its brand and positions it amongst consumers. So there are certain questions as part of the case study which we'll be covering. The first question is, uh, as Tesco expands overseas, can it, can it succeed by using the same strategies it has used in the United Kingdom? So I believe that it cannot succeed using the same strategies because other countries will have different consumer mindsets. They, the people over there will not have the same preferences as people in the UK, while Tesco's core competencies are uh, structured in such a way that they can only they aid, they aid the people in the UK. Uh, and uh, recently, it had to retreat from the US market. It's uh, subsidiary called Fresh and Easy had to be uh, closed down. They sold it off uh, to a private. So what factors should it consider while formulating strategies in global markets? It should consider a localized strategy and invest in building uh, local supply chains and uh, acquiring uh, local supply chains, which it is quite good at, and also local partnerships uh, in order to create its own image. Instead of going and starting up with a Tesco brand in a new country, it can acquire a local retail brand and expand it further there. And uh, the third question in the case study is, what are the ways in which Tesco connects with its consumer, uh, customers to provide more value for them? So, as I said earlier, Tesco has an individual connect with all its consumers. And through its loyalty program called the Club Card, it sales promotions which are customized discounts for each uh, consumer based on their purchasing trends, then annual customer question time, and humorous advertisements, you know, it's something which consumers can easily connect to, as well as the ease of shopping. All of these are specific ways in which Tesco tries to connect with consumers and tries to try to build its brand. So let's just take a recap. So we went through the interview of the Tesco brand, looked at its overview, its history, its vision, where it has been in the news recently, its acquisitions, its criticism, its strengths and weaknesses, and uh, its advertisement strategy, and finally a bunch of questions as part of the case study. 
to sum it up, Tesco is a retail retailing brand, something which would compete with the Walmarts and the KFOs of the world to expand, but it's going to have to understand that its UK strategy won't work everywhere else. It'll have to empower local and then uh, use its local synergies to gain a competitive edge. So I think that's all for now. Thank you so much.